before I want to talk about <laughs> what I want to talk about exactly, uh, I tell you the story of the death of my father because he died two years ago of cancer. And confronting this death that made me aware of a lot of things, how I want to work, how I want to live, how I want to have relationships, how I want to do the music and so on. So I tell you this because in this encounter of death, something which is very strange and something which is very out of the experience we have uh, in our everyday life, I found a power to live more intensively. And this is important for what I just uh, want to tell you about. Um, so actually music in my family was always very important, especially with me and my dad. He made me discover all different kind of music and genres and crazy artists from the 70s. He came from the 68 movement. So I guess uh, music was particularly <laughs> important because it was a rebellion, it was expression for a new lifestyle, and it was a mean for transition from the conservative uh, 50s to, I don't know, new liberties and self-expression. So I think this was a reason why this was really important. Um, and actually, he also told me or it, yeah, taught me maybe more that every situation in life has a soundtrack. So for the happy times, there were soundtracks for the sad times, there was music and even, I don't know, you know, if I wanted to play with the neighbor child and the neighbor child didn't want to play with me, then he put on some music and, you know, I felt good. I didn't feel <laughs> alone. I felt there was something. <laughs> I was not a nice person anyways. And yeah, I guess, so I learned that the music was kind of always there in life and giving importance to life. And I remember even some days uh, before he died, he was sitting down with some old friends and uh, listened to, um, I don't know if you know it, The right, White Room by Cream, like rock and roll. You know, still like, okay, the music is still, still there. So I grew up really with music as the most important thing in my life. Um, I, I'm really glad I learned very playfully to experiment all kind of instruments and stuff like this. Um, for me, I guess it was always a language I kind of learned to understand. So I had the feeling I, I grew up in a small city, but you know, the different kinds of music I listened to told me about different lifestyles, different people, different countries. And also you could feel how, okay, this person think this topic is really worth making a song. Um, so for me, that was uh, a quality of um, music. But the most important thing for me was that music had kind of a liberating quality. I don't know if you can rely to that, but for me, sometimes I really felt free when I listened to music. I had this feeling I could share, feelings I have myself with other people, I could go somewhere else. I had the feeling I'm part of the world and I don't have to make any effort for this, just listening to music really carefully. And um, I think this is like, I mean, being a freelancing musician since years, um, this is the most intriguing part for me, I guess, about music. And I think what is happening when I talk about the sensation of freedom in music is that if I give in to the music, if I listen to music, I kind of go somewhere. <laughs> I go to a different place. I deconnect a little bit just from my super subjective point of view. In the moment of listening, I'm not like thinking, ah, okay, should I call my mom back and then work, or should I work and then call my mom? You know, this kind of thoughts, they, they, they don't arise anymore. And I think this visiting of a different place, this sounds a little bit transcendent maybe, I think this um, has a ritual 
aspect or quality. Because a ritual, I guess in the end, it is a form, a familiar form, that is there to create intensity. A repeated act, maybe with a connection to the past, for example, cultural knowledge connected to the moment that you are in, and there is always a moment on, on, of our transformation to the future because a ritual is always there to get something, right? And I guess um, music and ritual that was always connected in every society for the celebration, or let's say celebration, but for ceremony of death or birth, and of course for ceremony in general, because, um, yeah, partying that you are alive, of course, is a really big part of rituals. And I think music was always part of this. Um, it's very interesting in different languages, the, the word music doesn't exist also in the same way than we have it here, where it's just like an acoustic phenomen phenomenon, and it's more like a social thing. Okay, so this is what I want to talk about. If we understand the ritual aspect about music, I think we can understand the power music and art creation has to change reality. This is what I want to talk about. And maybe um, as an example, I would like to talk about the word atmosphere, um, because it's something, I guess, each of you already experienced that a special atmosphere in a concert or a performance happens. I remember <laughs> uh, one of the first concerts I went to after, after the big lockdowns was Patti Smith. And she had this moment where she uh, read a poem and spit it on stage. And then she kind of read the text and spit it on stage and then she sang and you know it was like the super crazy rhythmical kind of awkward performance but it was so powerful I was like wow <sighs> okay or I don't know I remember um, when I lived in Paris uh, I had this large ensemble and we always played in some underground places and uh, on one concert just suddenly the whole place started dancing, which is kind of already amazing, right? And then, I don't know what happened to the guy, but the baritone uh, saxophone player got so excited that he just ran into the crowd and started playing from the crowd. And it was just so cool because everybody was like, wow, what is happening? And they were dancing together and the band kind of played from the audience and stuff like this. Yeah, so for me, this is really like the success of a performance if the sudden change is happening. Um, and unfortunately, I guess, like, mostly this awareness of this, let's call it ritual potential of the music is forgotten. Like, if you go to, like, the classical concert, I mean, there is not so much space most of the times for sudden changes or uh, even... Um, in the jazz world, you know, this jazz connoisseur so always clap after each solo. And I always think, yeah, that made sense 50 years ago, but I'm not sure if, if it makes sense nowadays. And I guess you can always hear the difference between somebody freaking out because it's so amazing what you just played or somebody showing that he knows or she knows when to clap. So this is the thing. I don't know. Do you, do you like clapping, by the way? Do you like applauding? Applausing? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't like applauding at all, <laughs> really not. And I remember being a child, I went to the circus a lot, and then, you know, it's over and you clap, and then the artists come and they leave stage again and over and over again, and my hands were hurting, and you kind of continue. And, you know, I really, I don't like the sensation. So. I wonder why there is no variation in this, for example, like snapping. Could we try this? Like, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> or I imagine, I don't know, playing like a very quiet ballad and maybe you just wrap your hands because you don't want to destroy the silence or something like this.
<laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so I tell you a secret. Not only the person on stage is responsible for the performance, but you are. And this is very important, I guess. Um, you can influence every kind of performance and concert. I think this is, I don't know, mind-blowing for me it is. <laughs> Because, for example, uh, after I kind of thought a lot about this rituality thing, now if I go to a concert that I don't like and I think, oh, it's a little bit low energy, I always try to cheer the performer and to get a little bit energy into the situation and stuff like this. Sometimes, of course, it doesn't work, but sometimes it does work. And I think just being aware that everybody present in the same room and sharing an, an experience um, is capable of acting, actually. And it's beautiful for me because it's both. On, on one hand, you are influenced by the performance. You know, if the atmosphere suddenly is super emotional, I, I think it's very difficult to hold back. But also to know that, you know, if suddenly somebody starts to be like, yeah, it's great, and I don't know, the musicians, for example, play completely different after this. You are also in power, actually, in the situation. Um, and another thing um, that is important, I guess, for this atmosphere thing is really the moment where you leave yourself and you kind of become part of this bigger thing of the, of the performance. And this is why I told you the story about the death of my father, because really what I experienced is meeting some kind of stranger, some kind of outside thing, like the music experience, that gives me really the power to live and to be clear about what is important in life and to go away a little bit from, I don't know, money, success, um, you know, all those kind of things, but in the moment to be really present and in the end this experience of death of this this encounter with stranger was a really big present to me in the end um, even if it was a really sad thing um, I asked some friends during the preparation of this talk because I was like okay maybe I'm also really special with this freedom thing in music and I asked one friend, like, do you think music has something to do with freedom? And he said, yes, maybe it's just about that. Okay. And I asked another friend and he told me, um, for him, pure or the music in its purest form, um, it's freedom because within well-known boundaries, freedom can grow best. And I was like, aha, okay. He's appealing also to this form, to the well-known boundaries, to this construction, the framework maybe. And inside this form, there is space for change, for transformation, not just for the, the feeling of freedom, but also for transformation. And this is something, um, yeah, I mean, there is so many times this discussion about is musical, what is the worth uh, of music or of art in general in society, and I'm <laughs> super convinced that it's an extreme power, actually. There's this one thing that you can change relationships um, to yourself and to others. I don't know, um, for example, if you go to a concert and you experience yourself super extroverted and very... Uh, courageous, you encounter strangers, uh, you can communicate with them. I think this is an experience that can change relationships to other people and also to yourself, the way you see yourself because you're kind of thrown back to yourself. Um, another friend of mine said music helps to, to get a radical perception of reality and I think this has two aspects the sentence. On the one hand, what I just said, like this being thrown back on yourself and having um, maybe distance from things, again, like money or, or success that are less important and to be really, really be aware of what you want in life. And it has another dimension, 
which is maybe on a social uh, level very interesting. Music is action and thought at the same time. It's not like reading, like for example, if you read like an inspiring text, uh, I often have the feeling that I, 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 I read it, I understand it, and then one day later I have to read it again because I kind of forgot what was in there. I really have to fight to, to get this wisdom into my body. I really have to repeat it and I have to change myself to include this wisdom in my life. And in the performance, I mean, this is, I guess, uh, for all kind of performance arts um, the same, you kind of live it in the moment. You have the possibility to express thought right in the situation and everybody present witnesses this thing. And I think it has kind of a futuristic element because you could picture something that is not yet there, but you can still live live it in the performance. I remember uh, the first time I watched um, a, a video clip or like a live video of Sun Ra. I don't know if you know this band, like a very interesting Afro-American jazz artist um, who was one of the main figures in Afrofuturism. And the way they performed, you know, like it's so cool, really crazy, outrageous, crazy clothes. The way they performed, the way they, they played music, I really understood that they, I mean, it was a very political um, uh, music and very much for equality and stuff like this. And they just claimed the space. It was not like, a, hey, give me that space. No, it was there. You could see that they live what they were talking about. This is what I want to say. Okay, <laughs> this is the transformative power I see in music and with yeah maybe this experience of my life journey with the music I just wanted to invite you to really take serious the potential uh, of music and also you attending music and I think with this knowledge or with this awareness um, you can act really differently in every kind of situation and maybe cheer the performers in your very special way. It doesn't need to be loud, can be also quiet, can be listening, can be any kind of interaction to really embrace the communication process inside of this performance. And I also just wanted to invite you, like if you go to see concerts, music, whatever performances. Take your space, include your ideas. It's really like claiming space to be part of this and it's a very social moment and I think it can be a very powerful moment for a social change. And just maybe to finish this, all dictators knew this. In all like um, uh, World War II, for example, there was this German jazz band, a Nazi jazz band, Charlie and his orchestra, okay? German Nazi jazz band. Uh, they knew the power uh, of, of, the, of the culture and that in the music you can transform different ideas and different perception of life and society. <clears throat> so with this, I just finish. <laughs> you, you can, but I think... Um, Actually, I will do this because this won't make sense. <laughs> I think I won't because it's too complicated. <laughs>